So I ran into another Karen. I'm so sick of entitled people. I guess that's the world we live in where everybody thinks they deserve everything and nobody takes responsibility for themselves, right? Well, today's video is all about why I hate, 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 hate selling cheap cars. There's so much involved with selling cheap cars and most of it is the people you have to work with. Some are great, most are not so great. It's a lot of work. And this week, I dealt with a Karen and there was nothing I could do to keep this person happy. If you follow my channel, you know I love taking care of my customers. This is the first time I told somebody to go kick rocks and I gotta tell you, it felt great. She thinks she deserves something else, I gave her exactly what she deserved. Here's today's story, let's get going. So hey everyone in the YouTube world, my name is Craig from Flying Wheels. Welcome to my Flying Wheels YouTube channel. Most of the time, I have some nice stuff to sell. A 2021 Jeep Wrangler, a whole other collection of Jeep Wranglers. We have some nice trucks over there and a lot of toys. But every once in a while, I get something that's kind of cheap, like that right there. Or this right here. Well, what am I gonna do with those? I'm not just gonna turn them into the junkyard. They still have value to them. So what do you do with them? Well, I usually run them over to my overflow lot where they sit and they sit and they sit. Let's go over there and I'll talk a little more. This is my overflow lot. When I don't wanna sell a specific car, this is where it goes to die. But in some cases, these cars are still good cars. Like this Toyota Avalon, for example. I've had this Toyota Avalon for an entire year. It's a 98 Toyota Avalon with like 160,000 miles and it's pretty clean. But it's not the stuff I sell at my dealership. It's not the stuff I like to sell to the public. It's a cheap car. And cheap cars come with a lot of headaches. And it's not the car that's the headache. It's the people that are the headache. So when I say things come here to die, you'll see this boat. If you remember this boat, I bought it down in Florida a year ago this month. Everything was collapsing during quarantine. I flew down to Florida with my wife to pick up this boat. It was an absolute nightmare. And it has been a nightmare ever since. I have a video coming out on it soon. This is here to die because I can't do anything with it. The engine is out of it right now getting rebuilt and I hope I can have it in the water by the summer. Until then, it's just taking up space, so it sits here. This is a Mercury Sable. It's actually a really clean Mercury Sable and it only has 80,000 miles. See how clean the inside is. But it needs a fuel pump and ain't nobody got time for that. I don't have time to do a fuel pump in an O2 Mercury Sable. I have other things that make me money at my shop to focus on rather than that. This is a Toyota Avalon. It's actually a really clean Toyota Avalon. You'll see here, it has low miles and it runs great, but you'll see the rust right there. Ain't nobody get time for that. At least I don't have time for that. I don't have time to fix rust repair. So it's worth money. It's not worth junking. So I kind of just put it here and let it sit until I have like a slow time or tax season when everybody has a little bit of cash. And then I'll throw it up for sale cheap, real cheap and I make all the announcements. I am very particular about letting everybody know up front about what's wrong with these cars. Why? Because they're going to be a headache if you don't tell them. If you don't tell everybody what is wrong with this car up front, it is going to be a headache on the back end. And I guarantee you're gonna be way more upset after the sale than you are just letting the car sit for an entire year. Selling cheap cars comes with headaches and it's not the car that's the headache, it's the people. The people that only have $1,000 to spend, it is their $1,000, they work their hardest to get that $1,000 and they just need a car, they just need that transportation. But I've been burned, I've been beat up for so long that I, my sympathy, my empathy is worn down and I don't have a lot of patience anymore. If one more person offers me $300 cash today on this Toyota Avalon, I'm gonna give them the address, bring them here and personally light it on fire in front of them. That's how little patience I have for this baloney. And to be honest with you, Facebook is what is ruining the world. Not just with politics, with the cars and marketplace as well. I cannot take cash today anymore in my direct messaging. It is driving me insane. I don't care if you have cash today, Bitcoin or gold bars. If you're offering me 50% or 75% of my asking price on anything, I'm going to lose my mind. I can't take it anymore. So I told you I was gonna give you an example. Today's example is a Volkswagen Beetle that has been sitting here for literally a year. You can see the indents in the ground right here. It was an O2 Volkswagen Beetle with 70,000 miles. It's been sitting. I have not done anything with it. You are buying it for parts only. 
So all these cars I sell not running, I sell as is, and I sell for parts only. I do not want them coming back on me. So I write it in the ad on Facebook Marketplace just to save time. Does not run, has been sitting for a long time, tires flat, battery dead, Everything I could think of, I put in the ad. I almost put so much that I should scare people away. Now this building you see here, I own this building. I purchased it a few years ago. I use it as rental income. I use it as space. I use it as storage. This is the original unit I started my business in long ago. This was my front line. I had it rode up with cars under five grand. Now when I wore the clothes of a younger man, I, I had a lot more patience. I had a lot more patience for low price cars and as age grew, as time grew, and as I got stepped on more, I started to step it up with the vehicles because also we had more capital because the business grew. So I increased the level of vehicle, which raised the standard for buyers and increased the caliber of buyers as well and lowered, reduced the headaches. Think about it, if you just keep getting stomped on and stomped on and stomped on, eventually you're gonna get so beaten down that you just don't have the patience anymore for it. Now I'm not just talking about cheap cars. Look at this message that this guy Marley sent me today. This is a $28,500 Denali Sierra pickup crew cab diesel. These things are worth a ton of money. I had it listed at 30,000, I just reduced it to 28,500. He messaged me, are you firm on the price? Now, as soon as somebody says that, I know instantly I'm gonna get cash today, low ball offer. I already know that's what they're gonna do. But he writes, I've got cash. So I wrote, it's a beautiful truck with no rust and no bubbling. Make me an offer I can't refuse. Now me saying make me an offer I can't refuse makes it very easy for me to refuse that silly offer. Well, I'm not going to waste your time. Just say no thanks if you won't take it, but I've got 22K cash in hand. That is a $6,500 discount. I don't make $6,500 profit on cars. How ridiculous, $6,500? You're talking like a 40% discount or a 30% discount on a $30,000 truck. First of all, look up your values. Do your research before making an offer. If you wanna make a silly offer, at least make a trade-in offer. Trade-in is 24,000 on this truck. He was $2,000 below that. And this is a nice, nice truck. I'm a beaten down man. I get these offers from the second I wake up till the middle of the night when my phone is dinging because I'm getting silly offers from people that have been drinking all night and feel like just sending silly cash today offers. And then when you accept it, they don't even respond. Now this is the life I chose. This is the career I chose and it's lucrative and I do really, really well. So I don't have any real complaints. So let's go to my other shop and I'm gonna carry the story on. Welcome to my shop. German. Good morning. Good morning. You mind being on video real quick? Guess who charged back the PayPal charge on the Beetle for $900? Are you kidding me? Not kidding. So I don't take credit cards for this reason, because credit cards can be charged back. Six months down the road after a customer buys a car, if they're unhappy with something, beep, 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 call their credit card company. I don't like this purchase. I don't remember making it. Charge back, it gets taken out of our account. I told this customer we only accept cash. Remember how rude she was? She was rude, mean. She was a mean old person to me, to him and to Sarah in the office. And I'm like, whatever, just if you have it on PayPal, send it through PayPal. Well, she used some type of like welfare debit card for PayPal and I didn't realize it. And then three days later, she charges back the $900. That's why I don't sell cheap cars. So here's the story. I had a 2002 Volkswagen Beetle GLS, leather, sunroof, five-speed manual transmission. Miles weren't crazy on it and it was pretty clean but it's not stuff we sell here. I brought it to that shop a long time ago and it kind of just sat. Well, it's tax time, everybody has a little bit of cash, we wanna free up some space, so we threw it up on Facebook Marketplace, cheap. Doesn't run, we listed everything we could think of that it needed, and we even said we don't know a lot about it because it's been sitting for so long. So we can't be more transparent than that because we don't want it to come back on us the back end. German, I haven't coaxed you, I haven't told you anything about this video. Tell me what you told the customer on the Volkswagen. So actually, I can remember, I'm telling her that I couldn't stress, it, it stress enough the fact that this vehicle was going to need repairs, brakes, battery, tune-up, oil changes, changes, fluid, go through the fluids because it's been sitting so long. And I told her that multiple times. And she um, she says, yeah, you know, we're like a um, mechanically inclined family. We know vehicles. I love the VWs. I like the fact that it's a standard. You know, and I continue to tell her because we gave her a huge discount on top of what we already have posted the vehicle for. And then I was in the office and I heard you say, listen, I, I want to be up front with you. I don't want you upset on the back end. I heard you say that in the yes. office. Then she came back Monday. We're closed on Monday. I just happened to be in the office. She came in all huffy and she wanted it 
on Monday. And I told her her payment hasn't even processed yet because of the way she paid. She yelled at me in the office. She was like all moody and pissy about it. And I'm like, you know what, just whatever, just take it. So she had it towed out because she knew she had to get it towed out. Yet last night I got the PayPal email saying that she charged back her account on the Beetle. So when we were in the office, her and me, her and me, her and I, when we were in the office, I told her too, I reiterated what you said. Listen, I don't even like selling cheap cars. It's a headache. I had made a transfer for stock. I was buying some ACV stock because they're going public today. So I was on the phone with my stockbroker and she was, she kind of stormed in the office and I had made a $10,000 trade. Well, while she was buying the car, I'm like, I'm sorry, you're $900 on hold. She yelled at me. She said, you know, you're making trades for $10,000 while I'm trying to buy a car. I'm like, well, you didn't even have an appointment. And I was waiting for a phone call all day. So she yelled at me because I was buying other things. So that's how the whole transaction went from day one. But while she was in the office, I told her, I don't like selling cheap cars because it's a headache. So I would prefer just not sell her this car based on how she's uh, treating us. And she still wanted to keep moving forward with it. But again, I told her, it's like, we're not, I don't want to hear on the back end. I don't want to hear anything about this car. You're buying it for parts. It doesn't run. And she still is pissy about it. Say that again. <laughs> Did she take the car? Yeah, she still has the car. She never called me. She's never called me. She's never texted me. I responded on PayPal that said, call me, I'll try to take care of it for you. Just so it's like, whatever, I'll just take the car back. It's not worth a headache for me. Right. She didn't even call me. She just escalated it through PayPal. And what PayPal said was, I may not even get the item back if it's in her favor. Here I am with a thousand things to do at work today. And instead, I'm replying to a PayPal business claim to a pain in the butt customer that says we lied to her. So I responded, we sold a non-running vehicle that was significantly discounted to this person. We could not have explained in more detail that it has been sitting for a long time. Does not run, does not start, and needs work. She even arranged for towing of this vehicle herself. Myself and another person both explained to her and her boyfriend, who told us that they are experienced with auto repair thoroughly, that they are buying a non-running vehicle as is, and it must be towed out. And we do not want any headaches after the purchase. She agreed several times and signed and initialed several times as well. We sold it as is, no returns, unsafe, uninspected, not running, with no warranty. She agreed, signed, and initialed. Even though I told her I don't like selling cheap cars like this because the people are always a headache, she assured me she wouldn't be. Attached her all of the documents she has had, the vehicle in her possession for several days now and is still yet to call or text me or uh, and has only contacted me through this PayPal claim. I'm telling you right now, this is what is wrong with America. No one can take responsibility for their actions and everyone is a victim. This person is playing a victim for something that she did. She knew what she was getting into. I've been doing this a very long time. Long enough to know that she was gonna be a pain in the ass. I should have said no. I should have made her leave and I knew it. When she was here and she was rude to me and she was rude to German and she was rude to the girl in the office, I knew I should have just said, this isn't for you, leave. But I was in a rush. I was on my way to my son's birthday. She wanted the car. She insisted. And I went against my own judgment and I took it. And here I am making videos about a flipping $900 car that was annoying me from the very, very beginning. The problem is though, everybody plays a victim card. Every it's, it's always someone else's fault. Someone else did something to me. No one can ever stand up and just say, I was wrong. I say that all the time. I'm wrong all the time. This one, I am not wrong. German was not wrong. We told her, I can't deal with this right now. I can't believe we're even dealing with this right now. And she gave us attitude all while doing it. And charged back when she said she wouldn't, when I said I don't take cards because everybody charges them back. So uh, this is what I get. Okay, well it's the next day and I took a coach's night, which means when you're a baseball coach, you get an email from the parent, an angry parent, you instantly get infuriated and then you respond with a terrible email. A coach's email is you take the night and then you respond to the email the next day. That's where I'm at right now. I took the next day. I'm not as frustrated about that Volkswagen anymore, but this video is a perfect, perfect example of why I don't buy cheap cars, why I hate selling cheap cars. That CTSV, someone's coming from Kentucky and they're coming with a bank check for it. That Celine, someone got a loan for it because they have great credit for it. That Jeep, the guy is pumped to be buying that Jeep. The $900 Volkswagen, the lady was a complete B to German, to myself, multiple times. 
for 900 bucks and then she charged it back. Those cars are headaches. But hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. Maybe some people can only afford to be selling $900 cars. That's what I had to do when I first started. And I worked my way up to all this stuff now. I hope this video was helpful. It was really a frustrating day yesterday for me. I feel better today. Whatever, I'm gonna move past it. I can tell you this. You get more bees with honey. Had this lady just asked me politely, I don't need her $900. Had she asked me politely, hey, I'm sorry, I can't afford the repairs. It's more work than I thought. I don't really care. I just take the car back and move on. Just bring the car back to me. I don't care. You can have your money back. But she didn't even call me. She didn't even text me. Nothing. She just did exactly what she said she wasn't going to do through PayPal and charge it back and then call us bold-faced liars. You don't get treated well when you don't treat us well, all right? You want to get treated well? You treat me well. Treat others how you want to be treated, right? You want to be rude to everybody? Everybody's going to be rude back to you. I wasn't even rude. I, was, I actually like to go opposite. And when people are really rude, I like to butter them up more because I'm pretty sarcastic. And it makes me feel better. But anyway, that's how this video went. I hope I never have to deal with this again, although this is the life I chose. This is the business I'm in. I hope it was at least entertaining for you guys. If it was, subscribe down below if you haven't subscribed yet. If it was also entertaining, give me a thumbs up because it helps boost because it helps boost the algorithm and then more people get to see the video, then I can make better videos and, you know, circle everybody helping everybody. See y'all later. Thanks for watching. Adios.